Hello, wonderful. This is Sarah, and I'm here with Rosalind Sedaka. And you guys are in for a treat. This woman is doing so much for children, especially children of divorce. She's recognized as the voice of a child-centered divorce. Um, she's a divorce and parenting coach and founder of the Child-Centered Divorce Network for Parents. And this is such a treat for us because January is when we need to call attention to this. Is that right? Absolutely. January is International Child-Centered Divorce Month. It's our 13th, uh, 14th year commemorating it. And it's the month when more people initiate divorce than any other month of the year. They wait till after the holiday season. So this is the time. Wow, have you, I, I wanna dig into some books that you've done as well, but I have to ask the question, do you think it's going to be worse during the time of coronavirus? Yeah, it's it's getting worse. There, there's more drama and trauma in, in mm -hmm. families. People cooped up together more. Mm -hmm. People who've already divorced and are co-parenting, having issues. Um, one of the children being stuck in one parent's home and not able to go back and forth as they normally were used to. Yeah. Uh, things like that. The courts were closed for a long time. So when there were issues and challenges, the um, courts were not able to resolve them and the parents had to go and deal with them themselves. And of course, that's definitely more difficult. So a lot of things have just mounted up and it's a tough time for people um, preparing for divorce as well as already divorced. So what is a child-centered divorce? When you're going through a divorce and you wanna make sure and do right by your kids, um, what is a child-centered divorce? So as you know, if you're, if you're divorcing and there are no children involved, you never have to see that party again once the divorce is over. But mm -hmm. when you're a parent, you're a parent forever. And you need to work out the arrangements all the way through the divorce process and long after it into what I hope is a healthy co-parenting situation. So child-centered divorce is putting your children's needs first because your children are innocent. Mm -hmm. They didn't ask for this. Mm -hmm. Even if you're fighting about the kids, it's not their fault. Yeah. And so we try to get both parents to understand regardless of what your issues are and what kind of drama you're going through between one another your children don't deserve to be exposed to conflict and, and additional stress more than just the changes that happen in a divorce. And so we have divorce experts around the world who are all united in helping parents create the most harmonious and, and smooth divorce situation and co-parenting situation for their children. So I had, I don't remember where I read it, but someone said, expect your divorce to be a lot like your relationship was. So there's some divorces where they just fall out of love and, you know, they, it's not a good fit for each other. And those people probably have a lot easier time co-parenting okay. than if there was betrayal, uh, abuse, you know, any of those situations where it was a very tumultuous relationship to start mm -hmm. with. And it ends up being tumultuous even after the papers have been signed, right? That's unfortunately, that's what happened. And the more we can get both parents to focus on the one thing that they still have in common, hopefully, and that is loving their children, that bond can help parents who are really, really distraught and angry and, and filled with, with re regret and um, wanting to hurt one another to remember that we are the parents of these children we created together and we wanna do right by them. And in some cases, that is the piece of the puzzle that keeps them to, in making better decisions, smarter decisions on behalf of the children. When they lose that bond, then all hell can break loose. And who pays the price but the children? Mm -hmm. so well, let, yeah, I'd love to talk about what some, of those, what some of those smarter things are, right? Like good case practices for, um, you know, let, most of my People, my listeners are women. So, and most of them, unfortunately, are not in the situation where someone just fell out of love, right? It was a very tumultuous relationship. And now they are faced with what feels like a daunting task of trying to do right by their kids. Maybe they feel like their ex is sabotaging them or just left them to the curb, but there's a lot of hurt there. So what are some best case practices for doing right, even if the other 
they, I don't want to say if the other person isn't, but if you definitely feel at that time as if the other person isn't, um, what, what were some best case practices in well, that scenario? It's always good to hone your communication skills. Okay. Most arguments are about misunderstanding and misconstruing one another. And it's especially compounded when you have people who already have a toxic relationship. Mm -hmm. But if, if you listen and repeat back what you're hearing your partner say, it, very often you'll find that you didn't hear it exactly right or what they said wasn't, was misunderstood. And if, if you take the time to listen and paraphrase back, you'll get more clear communication. Also, you want to catch your partner doing something right. We all know we're, we're so angry at them that there's a thousand things we could point to about what they're doing wrong. But if you can say, thanks, I appreciated your calling me at 7.30 instead of eight yesterday, that's a good way to start a conversation before you talk about the other issues with the children. You're not just um, finding ways to say, no, 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 you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. And every, everyone wants to feel valued and appreciated. So listening skills so that your partner feels heard, so that you feel heard, and being able to find little ways of complimenting them and thanking them. And then when you're in conflict, remind, speak in the we, our family kind of mode. This is about us, our family because your, your ex doesn't care about how you're doing necessarily, but they care about how the kids are doing. So if you could focus on little Johnny and little Susie and talk about what's going on with them and why you're making this request and asking for this, then you're much more likely to get a reasonable outcome and be willing to compromise and do favors for one another we forget that co-parenting is a life sentence. It doesn't end in two years or 20 years. You want to be at your child's weddings and you want to be experiencing the joys of grandparenting and all of that. And so you want to find ways to say, if you do me a favor, this came up, I'm really stressed out. I, I have to change our schedule. I'll be happy to do that for you too. Start doing those things because if you if you go tit for tat and and pointing the finger and getting really rigid, it's going to hurt you in the long run. This is a lifelong experience, and remember that your children are watching, and you are role models, and they are learning how to behave in difficult, challenging situations, how to deal with crisis, how to deal with conflict. And they are watching and seeing what you're doing. And you can't lecture them about being behaving otherwise if you're not. So keep that in mind. Yeah, I really liked what you said about saying their words back to them so they feel heard. Um, even if you're in a situation where it feels like you may even have documented, like it's never fair. Like I'm flexible with them and they're never flexible with me. And it's like, not my imagination, like here's 10 examples of that, right? Mm -hmm. But even um, saying, I wanna make sure this is what I heard from you. Exactly. And then, um, you know, Bill Eddy talks about the BIF. I don't, I don't, he talks about with high conflict people using the BIF, which is brief, um, friendly, firm. And what you said about pointing out something, thank you for, you know, responding to me. Thank you for, picking them up yesterday. Thank you for whatever. Um, is this what I'm hearing from you? Making sure. Absolutely. And saying I, back to them. Yeah. I value Bill Eddie's, um, his work is very important and, and mm -hmm. definitely. And, and it's the same thing in talking to our children who may be very angry at you about the divorce or the outcome of the divorce. And you want to be able to listen to them and allow them to vent and express their frustration, even if they're saying things you don't want to hear, mm -hmm. it's important to let them know that you are listening. We all want to feel heard. We all want to feel validated. Mm -hmm. And it's a good way of starting a conversation to allow them to do that. And then you could explain why things aren't so easy mm -hmm. and you may not be able to do what they want at this time. Mm -hmm. I love that too. Yeah. With our kids, making sure, okay, I want to make sure I heard you. I want to make sure I'm understanding, right? Even something as simple as that can make people feel so validated and make our kids feel so validated. You pointed out in your article, um, 
uh, don't let your kids start parenting you. That sense of helplessness, sometimes in a messy divorce, we can feel so out of control. And we forget how much more our kids feel out of control and feel like their whole world is crumbling and they don't know which way is up and which way is down, right? That's right. And many children will become little heroes. If they mm. see mom or dad distraught, they're going to step in and become the little mom or dad in the household. And they're going to try to parent you. Never let your child be your confidant. This is, <laughs> this say is, it again. <laughs> and it's so tempting. You know, you're sad, frustrated. They come up to you. They, they hug you around, even teenagers. Yeah. And they'll say, don't worry about it, mom. I'll, I'll help. I'll take care of this. And you start talking to them and say, if only he didn't do that. And if only he didn't say that. And, and, and you start crying and weeping. And the, what happens is your child loses their childhood. They become mm -hmm. little adults. It happened in my own life. And it, it's a terrible thing to do because life is difficult enough for children at all stages and phases. They have their own issues to deal with, let alone to take on the emotional and psychological challenges of a divorce or a parent who can't handle divorce. That's why we have professionals who are there who understand the dynamics. Don't bring your children in. If your children can't undo it, which in most cases is, is the is the reality, sure, yeah, they shouldn't. Then sh they shouldn't be involved. As tempting as it is to say, "Dad had an affair, and that's why I'm so angry," don't do it until they're an adult, because it changes their relationship with themselves and with their other parent, mm -hmm. and it hurts and wounds them, and they're helpless to do anything about it. And I, that's something I really want to point out and, and emphasize what you just said. It changes their relationship with themselves. If you say your dad or mom is stupid or worthless or whatever else, there's a piece of them, a piece of kids, right? That say, maybe there's a part of me that's worthless. Maybe there's a part of me that's stupid. Very well said and so true. And it's, that's when I, when I said children pay the price. Those are the yeah. kinds of prices we're talking about. It's emotional wounding and scarring that they take with them for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. When my, uh, my son was 11, when I had my own divorce, after years of putting it off because I didn't want to hurt him and scar him, and finally I realized that he was starting to show symptoms of being exposed to stress and conflict at home. And I knew that we, we had to make this, this break. And I um, spent years with my ex learning how to co-parent successfully. And one day when my son was in his 20s, out of the blue, he came to me and he said, you know, Ma, you and Daddy did a really good job with your divorce. And I just want to thank you mm -hmm. because most of my friends whose parents divorced either hate their parents or are really angry at them. Mm -hmm. And I thought you guys were great. And I just let out such a sigh of relief. I was holding on to so much stress and insecurity about did I screw my son over because <laughs> yes. it's worried about. Of and course, yeah. The catalyst, the, the moment at which I founded the Child Centered Divorce Network and became Aww. a divorce and co parenting coach and started writing How Do I Tell the Kids About the Divorce? Because I knew I had something of value to share with other parents. To, to do it right, to focus on the children. And my son wrote the forward to the book, which I'm very Aww. proud of. So I know that other families can have happy endings too in that regard. It doesn't have to always be toxic. And I know in some cases it is more toxic than others. Not everyone has two parents who are going to play the game together. Mm -hmm. But we can be the role models that our children remember and look up to and say, I'm so impressed with how mom handled that. Well, absolutely. And regardless of how unfair the other person may or may not be, or if they are playing by a different set of rules or they are continuing to cause chaos or whatever they're doing, there's no excuse for us not creating emotional stability within ourselves. Mm -hmm. So exactly like what you're saying. So the kids do not have... and. I have two pet peeves. I have two pet peeves. Um, one are people who are healers who are not like leading by example. Like if you are doing this and then you are like creating craziness in your life or whatever. And then when people say, oh no, my kids, I don't have to lead my kids by example because they're stronger than me. Oh. Right. And every time I hear that, 
the rage that runs through my body and, and sadness. It is, it is not a, an angry rage necessarily. It is heartbroken for those children. Totally, totally. It's, it's not doing right by them. Our mm -hmm. children deserve better and they deserve to have a childhood in which they feel safe and secure and mm -hmm. divorce affects the foundation of security. So the, mm -hmm. the most important factor is letting your children know that responsible parents are taking care of things and things are gonna be okay. They don't have to be privy to all the details. That's, that's not their job. Their job is to function despite the divorce and move on with being a kid and going to school and dealing with friends and bullying and all the other challenges kids have. Mm -hmm. It's not their job to take care of you and it's not their job to advise you. So Ooh. don't ask them to make yes. sense between parents. <laughs> it is not their job to take care of you and it is not their job to advise you. And I'm sure you're familiar with dynamic where sometimes it's like, oh, I'm just pouring everything that I have into my kids. I poured everything into my marriage. I'm now pouring everything into my kids. And then so rather than a balance of when I'm upset, I have this relationship, I have this mental health professional, I have this situation where balance in my life. It's like, well, all I have is my kids. Yeah. So they can become my sounding board or my emotional support. And it's, oh, I do want to clarify, and you may have a different opinion about this. I'll say in my own life, right? So sometimes I, you know, I'll be going through something and I'll say, you know, mommy's just having a hard day. She just needs a timeout. That is drastically different. That, that is just showing your kids that people aren't perfect, right? Yeah. Uh, even when I was doing my book, I showed my kids because my daughter, she's a real perfectionist, right? And so I showed her all the edits that they had sent back. I showed her all the red on the paper. And I said, do you think this makes mom stupid or not okay? Or, you know, do I have... To do I have to be perfect or is this okay? And she's like, well, I guess it's okay, you know? So that's not what we're talking about here, <laughs> right? We're, we're talking about, I can't believe your dad, blah, 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 blah. He's such a jerk. That That is never, that that creates long-term damage, right? Well, the, the biggest mistakes are one, fighting around the kids, even if it's on the phone or in another room, because it hurts children and, and it changes who they are. Mm -hmm. And um, all studies have shown that that's the most destructive thing parents can do is, is exposing children to their conflict. And the, the, the second is asking children to take sides and make, make differences between the parents. So when the one child comes back from, from visitation and you start probing them about what happened there and, and um, what did you eat and what did you say and where did you go and, wh and what's daddy's girlfriend like and all of that. We have to understand that for our children, they're trying to protect both of us and they don't want to be caught in, in that kind of uncomfortable situation. Children usually love both parents and are hurt when they're being pulled apart. And, and we also don't want to ever badmouth the other parent as tempting as it may be and as justified as it may be. It's not our place to badmouth the, the adult that, that our children love and, and who may be treating our children very well. So it's, it's a tough road to walk. It's not an easy area. It's filled, it's a minefield and it's filled with, with challenges for us. But that's why you, you reach out, get help from, from a coach, from a therapist, from a support group. And you don't bring your children and get them caught up in this because as I said, they have enough to deal with just getting through the divorce, moving on after the divorce and growing up in, in life. So we don't want to- I'd love your opinion on something, okay? Sure. So I'd heard, I can't remember who said this, but they kind of said, in there's certain situations, right? Where it's like, oh, I can't believe daddy brought his new girlfriend and that's, and then there's other situations where daddy may like, or mom, I don't want to, be sexist here, but like a parent rages or there's something that is obviously inappropriate. Like, where do you find that balance of, well, I'm, I'm sincerely asking, you know, where it's like, well, you don't want to say what they did was okay. Like say they're in a situation and they raged on the child threw something across the room. Um, and you, you don't want to bad mouth the parent. And you also have a responsibility to say, 
that's not appropriate behavior. <laughs> how do you how do you teach and model well? It, it's definitely challenging. It's a great question and there's no simple answer. Mm -hmm. But what you're doing is separating the behavior. So you're not disrespecting the parent and bad mouthing the parent. You're making comments about that behavior has consequences and it made you feel hurt or made you frightened. And so we don't, we don't like when um, someone does that to us. You don't like when mommy does that to us. So, um, and then you of course want to speak to your co-parent and, and address those issues with a child focused um, arena about it so that they're understanding you're, you're saying these things, not because you're putting them down, but because you're speaking on behalf of the child. That softens the blow a lot. Also, it's very important, and I, I want to emphasize this, that it, it's never too late to apologize yourself if you exploded or said or did something that we're talking about now that you later realize is wrong. You get down on, on eye level with your child and say, mommy, mommy shouldn't have said that last week. Mommy, mommy sorry, I, I yelled at you with that way. And our children are very able to understand and appreciate that if, if mom or dad makes mistakes, I could make mistakes and I can apologize and I could own it and take responsibility. They won't do that if they never see it at home. So divorce is a wonderful opportunity to acknowledge sometimes you went off the rails and you did something that you regret. And now we're gonna change it. We're gonna change the rules, the decisions, the, the behaviors, and everyone can be on board because that's a reality in life. We all make mistakes and we can apologize and move on. Well, Again, I think that's a role model. Uh, role model. Yeah. And I think that's important too, because I know right now some of my listeners are saying, if I went to my partner and said, you raged on my child, they would say you're crazy, the term gaslighting, right? And they would say that didn't happen. I don't, you're crazy. I don't know what you're talking about, um, which is obviously can be very <laughs> frustrating in a co-parenting situation. But what you just talked about is role modeling. Okay. So maybe one parent thinks they never do anything wrong and they can behave badly and make excuses for it. But if you are role modeling and saying, and I, I, um, I, well, I showed you a little bit about what I did in my own life, but if there was a situation last week, my son, he, he always wants me to put him to bed and I was so tired. And I think he kind of woke me up and I was like grumpy. And the next morning, even I apologized and said, I'm sorry, I was grumpy. Mm -hmm. I didn't put you in, it was a very minor thing, but um, I tried for their worked very hard for there not to be major things, right? <laughs> Otherwise I wouldn't be leading by example, but that minor thing or major thing to say, you know what? I wasn't at my best self. I was already asleep. I was grumpy and didn't want you to put you to bed. I didn't want to get out of my bed to go put you in your bed. And I'm, I'm sorry if that made you sad, or I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings last night. There you go. Right. If you're Absolutely. doing that kind of behavior and you're frustrated because another parent may not be doing that or even willing to admit it, that is a strength of character, right? To be able to lead your kids. Yeah. Kids pick up on these things. They may not say something and admit it to you, but they pick up on the differences when they see one parent behaving one way and another parent the other way. They know if they're feeling more frightened or, or uneasy in one household or the other. They, they pick up on the, those things without being able to always express it. But like with my son thanking me when they grow up, you're not, you may not be getting the rewards next week, but they will acknowledge you for taking the high road and showing them the better way to behave and showing them that there are choices and options and consequences. We all need to understand the consequences of our behaviors and sometimes parents know that they can bully their kids through anything when they're younger, because they can, but ultimately children grow up and they hold us responsible for what, how we handle the divorce and everything related to it. And so there are some important questions we could ask ourselves early on to keep us from making some of the obvious mistakes too. And creating that emotional stability within yourself, right? So you're not getting to the point that you're reaching the end of your rope all the time and behaving badly in front of your kids, losing your temper, right? We need a support system for ourselves. Yes. Absolutely. And not our children. And our children are not our support system. <laughs> yeah. 
that's that's the big point the children are <laughs> our support system oh i love it rosalind tell us where we can find more about you and more about your journey this month for um international child, child center. center divorce month yes yes yeah well, Year-round, you could find me at childcenteredivorce.com. I have a free ebook right on the homepage. And then if you just go to the resources, there's dozens of courses and programs and ebooks and that I have, including anger management for co-parents, because sometimes one or both co-parents are, are needing help and support in that area. Mm -hmm. And in January for Child Centered Divorce Month, we have a special website that is divorced with an ED, divorcedparentsupport.com. And at divorcedparentsupport.com, if you enter your email address, you'll instantly get to the gifts page. And we have free gifts from divorce experts on four continents around the world. I checked out your divorce page. You sent that to me. I checked it out yeah. last night. It's great, yeah. And you can download as many as you want. And they're from wonderful people. They're all child-centered. They all care about the family dynamic. And it's um, videos and webinars and eBooks and even free coaching services. So it's, it's a, a great way for e all the experts to acknowledge the fact that children deserve extra attention when divorce is happening and after divorce and there's good ways to do it. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you for taking time out to help us um, on our journey to become uh, child-centered parents, right? And put the best interests of the kids as well as becoming toxic person-proof. Thank you so much. Pleasure talking with you.